Hello, Aaron James here. Uh, I wanted to do a short video on um, spinning some spinning tips on the Polywog spinning wheel from Spinolution on uh, spinning larger, like bulkier weight yarn on the four ounce bobbins. Because when I first got my wheel, my first wheel was a Lewitt S17, which uh, you can see in another video on my channel. <laughs> and so anyway, the Lewitt comes with like freakishly big bobbins. Like what the Lewitt considers to be a four ounce bobbin is uh, much larger. And I feel like any other wheel. So Lewitt's kind of weird that way. But uh, long story short, I got very spoiled by thinking that that was a four ounce bobbin. So then when I ordered the Polywog, which I love... You know, it said it had four ounce bobbins. So I was like, great, that's what I've got. That's what I'm used to. That should be no problem. So then the polywog came in and the bobbins were much smaller. They're actually, they're, they're normal four ounce bobbin size versus giant four ounce bobbin size. But um, it's just that they're kind of configured a bit differently. And But anyhow, it was driving me crazy trying to get, because um, I spent a lot of uh, like four ounce dyed braids. If you have seen my website, you know this. You know, it's my job, so I spin uh, a lot of four ounce dyed braids into, it ends up being about 80 plus yards of, uh, I'd say bulky weight yarn. I mean, it's not like crazy giant art yarn, but, um, you know, definitely poofy bulky art yarn. So, you know, a bulky weight nature. And so that's what I was needing to get. And I was like determined that if it said it was four ounce braid, that it was going to go on that four ounce bobbin because I just was tired of feeling like a crazy person. So I ended up getting some good tips from some other spinners that were in a Spinolution group that uh, totally worked and were great. So I just wanted to make a video because I know I've heard other people with the same questions um, as that. So I'm passing the information on. <laughs> so you are welcome. So anyhow, hold on. Let me see if I can get this camera angle. So this is uh, the wheel here. And um, what you want to do is first when you're spinning is you want to start you want to change and you can see this is kind of I'm two plying now so that's the you know it's it's easy to get it you know single ply you can easily get you know two ounces on that single ply no problem the problem I was encountering was when I was wanting to two ply that onto uh you know the one single bobbin here at the end that you can see so um that was where I was getting the problem. So let me get the camera up here. All right. Hopefully. Uh, uh, oh. All right. Hopefully that will stay where it's supposed to. So uh, that's what the problem was. Okay. Now that I've got everything going here, and it looks like I actually know what I'm doing, let me give you some of my tips. So anyhow. First tip is uh, make sure you have your Lazy Kate, which is also one of the reasons I love the Polywog, is it comes with a Lazy Kate built on, and you don't have to buy it extra as an accessory, because I hate having to buy things extra as an accessory. So the way you want to do this, because I was about to punch myself in the face trying to, like, ply this from the front, because my other wheel had had the Lazy Kate down on the bottom. Um, so anyhow... Put your two bobbins here, and I imagine this would be the same also if you had the Spinolution Echo or the Hopper. The Lazy Kate, which is an extra attachment, goes on the back of those two. So it's the same setup, it's just a bigger Lazy Kate. Anyhow, goes on the back. And so you'd be doing the same, uh, I, I imagine the same trick would work on both of those as well. Um, you know, anything where you've got the bobbins on the back and you're trying to ply in the front. So put them on both on one side, and then you bring the yarn around this, and you can't really see it from my rug. There's a third peg right there. So you're going to bring the yarn around the back of that, so then that keeps it from going into your drive band, which is what was driving me insane. Because I was trying to do it like around that way, and it, it was bad. So just bring it around the peg, and then that brings it over here, and then... You can see, like I said, bear with me at the camera angles. I've got my hand over here, so it comes from over here into my hand. And if you're left-handed, then I guess you would bring it this way. But I'm right-handed, so it's going to come this way. You bring it around into your hand, and so my hand is keeping this very easily out here or back here. You can pull it back towards your hip, but then you can't see it on the camera. But, you know, it's, it's very easily keeping it uh, out of you know, in any sort of harm's way there. So that's my first tip, is definitely any of the Spinolution Lazy Kates, I would say. I mean, you do it however you want, but I, bringing it around this back peg is uh, definitely what's up, in my opinion. 
my uh, the second advice for getting and like I said as you can see this is bulky weight yarn two plied onto this four ounce bobbin is you want to change pegs a lot the the idea is you want to wrap the yarn really tightly because actually the spinolution bobbin the bar in the middle is actually really thin it's like the bigger end is my pinky whereas the Lewitt one I was talking about was bigger was like much bigger bar in the middle so even though it looked bigger it really probably wasn't actually that much bigger it was just longer but so the trick with this is you want to get the yarn wrapped really tightly this is let me get the camera um, you want to get it wrapped really tightly around the middle so uh, especially when you first start spinning the you know the two ply onto here you want to be switching pegs like all the time so it's a little bit annoying at first you know you spin and then you're gonna bring you know just pretty much just keep bringing it down on each of these pegs fairly often so what you want to do is get a nice even coverage of the yarn all the way across so like smooth 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 and then start back at the top and then smooth 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 all the way down and you just keep doing that you know from top to bottom top to bottom and you don't have to change it as much when you get to like this point you can see how it's kind of like higher and then it dips down so you know you just want to keep it as tightly wrapped because that's what I was messing up I'd gotten really lazy on the bigger bobbins and I was, uh, you know, just kind of like spinning a whole bunch here, and then it would kind of get like bunchy, and it would like slump down. And you wouldn't really think that would make that big of a difference, but uh, it really did for me. So if you can wrap it tightly around the middle each time you go down, you're going to get it, and it's really dense. You'll see at the end. Uh, get you, you will, I promise. You will get all four ounces on here, and it will fill all the way up to the top instead of like... Is if you leave too much room, it kind of like collapses on itself, and you end up with a bunch of air in there, and so then that's taking up space instead of uh, the yarn. So that's definitely switch pegs, especially at the beginning, like very often. Okay, let me see if I can get this camera to stay again. There we go. So uh, and it's awkward stopping and starting with this, but uh, so I'm going to spin down here and you know I'm just letting it get nice and tight and then pulling it in and then you can see you know it's getting big there I'm just gonna bring this down on that peg and then start spinning again and just you know you're spinning and drafting spinning and drafting and just you know let it twist and get tight and then I kind of pull it down I am totally self-taught so if I'm doing this in some non-technical way that uh, is wrong according to the textbook, uh, you know, I'm sorry, this is what works for me. But, um, you know, you just keep moving your pegs down until you get a nice, uh, you know, tight bobbin. So I'm going to finish spinning this, and then when I get right to the end, I will start filming again. Okay, as you see, I have spun down uh, pretty much everything that was on here. I'm running out of this one before that one because uh, they were uneven. So I've got most everything is on this bobbin. Let's zoom in. Yep, there it is. And uh, as you see, it is really full. So I have been moving the hook. Actually, the yarn is extending up past where the little uh, pegs are. But because of the lip on the pegs, you can still keep moving it, and actually I can still get a little bit more on down here. You can see where there's a spot there. But um, you do need to, the, the third tip on this was, uh, let's see, where is it? There you go. The tension block over here, as you are spinning and as it gets fuller and fuller, you're going to need to increase the tension on the tension block to help pull, uh, you know, pull up the uptake because you're like I said the goal is still to get it wrapped as tightly around here as you can so by upping the tension on the tension block you know you're going to pull that in you know a little bit faster to make up for the fact that the bobbin uh was getting really full so here like I said I let me break the yarn on this one oh silly camera okay well like I said I'd run out for as much as I could get on there and like I could still get a little bit more right here on this part, but for the sake of showing you in this video, uh, you pop the hook orifice off, which I love the hook orifice because you can uh, easily spin art yarn on it, and then uh, pop the bobbin off. And you can see what I'm talking about. I could still, if I wanted to keep going, get this last little bit, uh, you know, onto this part here. You can see where it's, you know, it's not as full right there. But um, I just wanted you to see, like I said, that was a, uh, this is from a braids, I mean, it wasn't an exact amount. I'd say it was about four ounce plus uh, dyed braid um, that 
you know, this is the weight of the yarn right here. You know, it's definitely a slightly thick and thin, uh, bulky weight two ply yarn. And uh, it does, I mean, like I said, this bobbin is like jam packed. But it's really squishy and really soft. And like I said, you can see where I could still get uh, some more over here. Uh, but I, my yarn broke. So I figured this was a good time to stop and finish up this video. So uh, it's, it can be done. Like I said, if you want to spin anything, you know, if you're looking to... Let me pop that up there. There you go. <laughs> if you're looking to spin, like, uh, you know, the really, like, the honeycomb or the big, giant, bulky, uh, like, super art yarn stuff, then the polywog with just the... Probably wouldn't be your best bet, but if you're just wanting to spin, uh, you know, you're starting out and you are happy doing two-ply, you know, worsted, bulky, or thinner... You can definitely uh, get four ounces on the four ounce bobbin, depending on, you know, thickness of what you're spinning. Uh, so anyhow, I just wanted to have a video to show everybody that, because one thing I really like about the Polywog is even though you can get the really nice uh, 16 ounce attachment and the accelerator and all of those would be great, I wanted to be able to show that if you were wanting to get into spinning and you didn't want to feel like you had to buy all the accessories, that you can definitely, you know, you can definitely get started and do pretty much any normal type of spinning on that wheel without any attachments. So I hope that helps.